Yes, yes, people, welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. Happy Friday, the weekend is here, Fulham away tomorrow. Stay tuned to my live reaction after the game, hopefully three points and then what would be a very good week. But we'll focus on that match preview towards the end of this video because the main topic is still all about these new changes to financial fair play punishment. So financial fair play is still in place. Check out yesterday's video where I go into the the new rules and that, where basically you can spend what you want and you won't get points deductions anymore, you won't get any real restraints or punishments apart from a fine, but as I said yesterday, what's a fine to a Saudi billionaire? Eh, absolutely not. Or, or in most Premier League clubs, to be fair, especially the ones in the top six, top eight, you know what I mean? Their multi-billion pound owners getting fines, not going to be bothered. Not going to be bothered at all. Do you mean totally with the risk? However, and I see you in the comments making this point yesterday because a lot of people on social media are talking about it. The risk involved in that for you UEFA. Now, we know the Premier League is going to be like, right, sound, spend what you want. Newcastle, go mad. Unlimited spending. I take Roman Abramovich, Chelsea 3 all over again. Do what you want. But UEFA already have their rule in place where you are not allowed to do this. So UEFA's 70% rule there is still very stringent, accordingly, anyways, because their rules there... People are then saying that Newcastle will get banned from the Champions League or Europa League or Conference League, it's all under the UEFA umbrella, if we did go ahead, went mental this summer, spent hundreds and hundreds of millions, broke the rules, according to them, next year finished third, get Champions League, or like I said, six, get Europa League, whatever, and then we get banned, they'll be like, nah, you're not coming in, two an army, you're not coming in, no passports here, denied, access denied, you're not crossing that border, Brexit, because they wouldn't let you in. They wouldn't let we're compete in these European competitions because we've went against their rules. Essentially, that's what they're saying. You know, their rules are in place. They're staying in place. They don't care if the Premier League's allowing you to do what you want now. You've still got to follow our rules. You've still got to do what we're talking about. What we're saying goes. Unless you're Paris Saint-Germain, of course, because that's what I'm talking about. So all these rules are in place, yet Paris Saint-Germain are paying millions to Mbappe on a weekly basis. Their wages, their transfer fees for years have been through the roof. Although we do know that one of their owners is on the board of UEFA, don't we? After that last minute penalty in the Parc de Prince. Anyways, so teams like PSG, Barcelona, all these debts of hundreds of millions and billions and all the spending and everything else, yet they can still be involved in the Champions League. So I'm not sure how seriously I'm taking that. Now, in the past, Carl Tassaroy have been banned for two years. How are these teams that I've just mentioned not getting banned? Reese, I'm going to hold this mate because it keeps on dragging me top down. So, so there's no nip slips. I'll hold the mic. So as I was saying, there's many teams lately that are still getting away with splashing the cash and are very much in the Champions League. Now, Man City obviously got done by UEFA a couple of years ago, but that just timed out. They were meant to be getting banned from the Champions League. They were meant to be getting kicked out for two to three seasons. And then apparently the core case just kind of going and going, exceeded the time limit and they never got punished. Or did they get a bit of that? A little one of them. Brown envelopes. Plenty of brown envelopes in the tune from Saudi. No, you bother. Slide them all the way into the UEFA headquarters. That'll do lovely, because if everyone else is doing it, why not? Do you know I mean? Why wouldn't you? So, aye, Man City got away with it. They're still getting away with 115 charges. We're changing the rules, basically, for Man City and for Chelsea and for Man United's new owners, so they can spend the money. So, you know what I mean? It's all a bit daft, isn't it? All these rules and everything. I'm, how strict are they? What's really going to happen? Do you know what I mean? And to be honest, I'm not that arsed. At the minute... I'm not bored. I'll tell you what, I'll happily go and spend 500 million this summer, get us in the title race, and then not get in the Champions League. Ban me from Europe. I'm staying put. I'm not bored. I'll stay put. Let's just focus on domestic competitions first and foremost. Tell you what we'll do. We'll go on a mad spending spree, unlimited transfers, sign who we want, big wages, offer Bruno and everyone else, big massive wages, so they stay at the tune. We sign better players, we rise up the league, and we hopefully start winning trophies. Give me... An FA Cup, because we're, we're fine to spend in this country, I'll start winning FA Cup. I'll start winning FA Cups. I'll start getting the title race. Then I'll worry about the Champions League. I tell you what, let's just solidify our place in this country first before we start thinking about challenging Europe's elite. Yeah? So what we'll do first of all, title race. Little FA Cup here. Little Carabao Cup there. Do all that for a couple of years. And then we'll worry about the Champions League. And then we'll sort the finances out. And then we'll apply by their rules. And by that point, we'll be like Man City and the rest of them. And we'll be comfy, cosy, ready. That's our, honestly, I'm not a bob because at the minute, you know, Champions League, winning Champions Leagues and stuff is well beyond us. Yes, 
I hope we get Europa League this year. I hope we get some form of European football. And when will this really come into place? And to be honest, right, all this is going on is if we're going to go on mental and literally start offering money for Mbappe. Like what, you know, mainstream media thought we're going to do when we got this massive Saudi takeover. Oh, look at this 11 that Newcastle are going to buy. It's got Mbappe in it. It's got bloody everyone in it. It's That's not going to happen, right? That's never going to happen. I even think with these new rules, if they are meant to come into place, and remember, check out yesterday's video for more info on it, where you can essentially spend what you want, you'll just get fined, you won't get points deductions or anything. I don't think that means that we will then go on a limitless spending this summer, to be honest with you. I just think it means we'll be able to sign quality players that we want to do already. We'll be able to sign people that would have liked to have done in January with the injury crisis and everything else. So I don't think this new rule means Newcastle are going to go and spend five, six hundred million this summer. I just think it means we can then go and spend two, three hundred million, which is still obviously a lot, but I don't think it's going to turn into an absolute frenzy, a crazy spending spree. Do you know what I mean? Your missus has just stole your credit card. She's like, we're on a madness. She's buying everything. Prada, Dior, Gucci. We're not going to do that. We're not going to go and spend the Pradas, the Mbappes, the whatever. We're just going to go and spend some quality players. And it just means we can keep a hold of our players as well, which is one of the best things to come out of this new rule for me, is that the likes of Bruno, Isaac, Botman, if you was fit, Gordon and that, you know, they'll stay, they're more likely to stay now for me because we can show more ambition by spending what we've got there, what's sitting there. We have the ability to spend, but because of the profit sustainability rules, we couldn't do it. Now if they're leaning on them, Let's go. We can go and really slouching down. I look tiny. So, you know, it means we can really go for it now. It means we can go for it. We can keep a hold of our players. And we can try and be our best. You know what I mean? We can push for the ambition that we have, which is to compete and to be right up there and win trophies. So, the, th- the stuff with the Champions League stuff, I hear what people are saying. But again, I think unless you go crazy and really took the piss and broke loads of rules, which I don't think we would do anyways... I'm sure the owners and everyone else at the club will be like, right, these, these new rules, brilliant, but what do we, what can we actually do? Right, so we need to know that we can we can still only cross this line of spending and this line of wages if we did one again in the Champions League. So we'll, we'll have to cut back on that. Yes, we'll sign him, but we can't, well, maybe can't sign him. We can offer him that much, but we can't really go all in on that player and give him a huge wage. Do you know what I mean? So again, it's about finding middle ground. It's not about going absolutely bonkers and doing a Chelsea Tarboli, spending, you know, 250 million on two midfielders and billions of pounds on a start 11 and crazy contracts of eight years on big bucks. Like, we're not going to do that anyways. We'll be more sensible with it like we have done since the start of the takeover. So I don't think it would really impact us that way. But uh, they'd still be small, that they'd still realise what the, the line would be that they could cross. And I think it would get to the point where, say, if we were third, second, we think, all right, we're going to get Champions League, Ooh, but we're going to break that rule. Do we need to try and shift some weight there? Maybe we don't sign him next summer. You know, there'll be ways around it. And listen, at the minute, this is still hasn't been confirmed. So we'll wait and see what you know how it would comply, what UEFA would actually do. But this is in response to you in the comments and on social media where people are saying, well, if Newcastle did go mad with these new rules where you can essentially do unlimited spending if you want to pay the fines, then it means we'll get, you know, disqualified from UEFA and they will kick us out of the Champions League and everything. So those are my uh, quick thoughts on it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now we do play Fulham tomorrow, Saturday at 3pm. We are looking for our fifth win in a row at Craven Cottage. So it is a real happy hunting ground for the two Nami there down on the banks of the Thames. For a team that didn't travel well to London for so long, where you used to always get beat in the capital, didn't we? We really like playing Fulham. We beat them 2-0 this year in the FA Cup, but that was a tight game, to be honest with you. But I was looking for five wins in a row down there, so that would be amazing if we could get it, because at the start of the week, if you had said to me, you'll get seven points in these three games, you would have took it, because you would have thought, we'll probably beat Everton, we'll make draw or beat Fulham, and we'll we'll get something against West Ham. So I would, I would take that all day long. After the great win against West Ham... It's a big shame we didn't capitalise on that and get back-to-back wins and beat Everton on Tuesday. And then especially after Man U last night, getting beat off Chelsea, it leaves sixth place wide open still. We would have been just a couple of points off them if we had to beat Everton. But we're only four now and they play Liverpool on Sunday, so hopefully they'll get pumped at Old Trafford there. I think it's at Old Trafford, but they do play Liverpool either way. So, Newcastle need to focus on themselves though. And Eddie Howe said it at Danny's press conference, which is a bit of a boring one to be fair. Normally we'll do the press conference reaction, but there wasn't many great snippets today. But he was saying, you know, they're just trying to find some consistency. He talked about Lewis Hall. He should be all right for tomorrow's trip. So that's really good news since everyone else is injured still. Lewis Hall could and should feature. So that's positive to see him come back in at left back. And Isaac, he talked Isaac up saying he's one of the best and everything. And again, he was asked about Bruno and he said... What's on your screen now 
on Bruno Gimenez. Essentially saying Bruno is a very rare player to find and he has no intention of selling him. He wants to keep him at the club for a very long time. So we'll wait and see. Obviously, that could all change in the summer of bids and everything come in. But that's... We'll talk about it on the podcast. We've already talked about future players' contracts and stuff on the pod. So let's focus on the game tomorrow. I'm not sure it's going to be that easy. Fulham can be a really good side. I think Silva's doing a good job down there. They've got one of the most informed strikers in the country. And Rodrigo Munez up top. He's on fire. They can be dangerous. I think they will be. But I'm going to say Newcastle will edge this one. 2-1, maybe even a 3-1 if they're going for and we can hit them on the counter. But I just really hope we can get three points because we want to really stay in that 6-7th mix now that the opportunity's there. Really is now after Manu's downfall a little bit and beating West Ham. The opportunity is there. So draw wouldn't be the worst, but I think we've really got to try and go to grounds like Fulham and get a win. That being said, they did smash Spurs a few weeks back. They beat Manu. So like, it's hard with Fulham. It really is. It's a difficult one. It's difficult in the Premier League now. There's only, what, eight, nine games to go and everyone's looking at a bit of a mixed bag apart from Liverpool and Arsenal who keep winning. Everyone else, the, the, the Eddie Howe said it, it's the hard thing, the hard to really get a hold of some consistency. It'll be nice if we could so we can get three points tomorrow and go into next week's game against Spurs which will be a really tough one. So I am going to go for a close Newcastle win against Fulham. Make sure you drop your score predictions in the comments below. Subscribe to my Pie Channel TV and enjoy yourself.